Well, good morning, and yes, indeed, happy Easter to everybody. Uh, um, it's certainly a different Easter, you know, not being together. But the good news is we have set a target date for April 18th when um, uh, as long as the numbers go down and vaccines go up, we hope to be able to join together once again in our church safely. And as I've said before, you'll be getting more information about that. So um, I can't thank you enough for all that you have continued to do through this pandemic, you know, of consciously reaching out to one another, whether that be from by phone calls or text messages or Facebook or however it is you stay in touch. Uh, you have just been remarkable in continuing to do the work outside the walls of this church. And we look forward to the time when we can come back together inside the walls of this church, both here at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Weston and Transfiguration Episcopal Church in Buchanan. Uh, that will happen not next week, but we've set a target date for the next week, which is April 18th. So I, I look forward to seeing everybody and, uh, um, and, and we'll have uh, appropriate spacing. Uh, of course, everyone will be expected to wear a mask and we're gonna try this. It'll be different, you know, but at least we'll be together. So that's April 18th. Hope is on the horizon. So uh, that's really good news. Um, I, I'll mention it again at the end, but our Episcopal 101 uh, will continue to meet uh, this Wednesday at six o'clock on Zoom. Uh, if you'd like an invite or some need information about uh, how to easier use Zoom, uh, you can call the church office. Uh, Mary will be here Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, but Tuesday and Wednesday for uh, this week's session. And, and she's a whiz at helping people set that up. So, And uh, we have a guest uh, speaker this week, Bishop Klusmeyer, is going to be with us. And uh, so we're looking forward to picking his brain and sharing his faith and all that he brings to our Episcopal Church and all that he brings uh, this week to St. Paul's and Transfiguration. So that's Wednesday at six. It's only 45 minutes, you know, and we, we really try to make it fun uh, so that everybody can enjoy themselves. So Wednesday, six o'clock, Episcopal 101, guest speaker, Bishop Klusmeyer. Um, and it's only for 45 minutes. So uh, ho hopefully you can join us. Again, I thank you for all the sacrifices and efforts you have made to keep not only your life, but the life of our community sacred and safe. Um, we are getting there. You know, there is hope. And we are hopeful that we will be back together in person on April 18th. And you'll get some more information about that in the next couple of weeks. So for goodness sakes, he is risen, you know, and happy Easter. I can't thank you enough for being here. Before we start, let's just take a moment to let that sink in about what his resurrected presence that draws us together means not only to us individually, but to us as a community of believers. And we pray, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. So cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray.
Almighty God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw, and he believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, well, they've taken away my Lord, and I, I don't know where they've laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and sisters and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Almighty God, we have heard your word proclaimed here in our midst. May your word shape and form us into the people you have called us to become. Amen. You know, to some of them, it was the end of the road. I mean, it had been a wild ride, to be sure. 
It had been a journey that had taken them to witness miracles, to share meals, to experience the closeness of God that up until that time had been previously unheard of. But after Thursday's dinner and Friday, when the miracle did not happen, their energy was sapped. Their tanks were on empty. A wild ride, to be sure. But to most of them, it appeared to be the end of the road. You know, to some of them, it appeared just to be another hole in the ground. And inside that hole, it was dark. Light did not penetrate there. It was damp. It was cold. Unable to be warmed by the sun's rays. It was a reminder of death, life's ultimate and inescapable defeat. Respectable people would give that hole in the ground a, a wide berth, and God-fearing people would not go close to it and risk defilement of the unclean and impure thoughts and spirits that lurk there. To some, it was just a hole, damp and dark and empty that hid the evidence of death and defeat. To some, it represented failure. Failure, think about it, failure to carry out the very simplest of tasks. For instance, making sure that no one tamper with the forensic evidence of the corpse. The Roman soldiers had failed in that. And that same sour taste of, 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 of failure was savored with those who had waited with spices and, and, and burial oils because there was no body. They would fail in the task that they had come to perform. To be sure, the Romans had killed him. And it appeared that the religious leaders would get back to orthodoxy as they knew it. On the disciples' part, they had had their fill of a God who had let them down one more time. So to some, it seemed like it was the end of the road. To some, it was another hole in the ground. To others, it was a failure to get the job done. But that's where we come in. Because we know better. Because our Easter faith tells us to know better. We hold on to an Easter faith that reminds us it is no way the end of the road, but the beginning of a brand new journey. A journey which will indeed continue to be a wild ride, a ride that will take us to expect to meet the miraculous in the otherwise everydayness and mundaneness of our lives. It's a wild ride that will cause us to come together and, and support one another and, and, and nourish one another and, and share our stories and share our faith and, and share our encouragement. It's a wild ride that will never let us forget that God is with us every step of the way. 
For we who believe, it is anything but an empty hole in the ground. But that empty tomb is a is a is a sign of the power of God who in, invites us, calls us, in fact, encourages us, empowers us to explore the emptiness, to not be afraid of the darkness, and to be a light to those we meet. For us who share this Easter faith this morning, there is in no way we view this or anything else as a failure. But we are reminded of the miraculous presence of God that continues to nudge us, to push us, to encourage us to maybe move in new and different directions, calls us to be a people of imagination, and calls us to be a people who are never afraid to explore the darkness or the scary parts of our lives. We are blessed with an Easter faith. We are blessed with an Easter faith of imagination to turn failure into opportunity and to meet him in places and events we never imagined possible. Happy Easter. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you bless us with an Easter faith, a faith that encourages us to continue the journey, to continue to explore the darkness and scary parts of our lives and our world, to continue to believe that you will never allow us to fail, that you defeated even death itself in the resurrection of your son, Jesus. So bless us, encourage us, empower us to be filled with this Easter faith and to move forth to announce your kingdom to those we meet. Amen. I um, invite your prayers. I'm going to scroll down here and see if, uh, if I can find some. We continue to pray for Laura's mom. Um, we continue to pray for uh, Rosalie and Aunt Rosie, Patsy. Um, we pray for Barty and Barbara and, and Mary, Karen, Tom, and, and Mentor. We pray for Charles and Carol. Uh, and Anessa, for Jack, and, and Molly, and, and, and Mark, and Millie. Um, and the Barnett family. We have, Lord, you know, so many prayers that reside in our heart. So seek, look deeply into our heart and hold those we love near to your heart. Uh, bring them a sense of peace and healing and shalom. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us this morning with your word, a word of, of hope, a word of encouragement. Send us into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy Easter. Next year we'll all be here. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to start reopening up too. So hope is on the horizon. 
I would remind you that on Wednesday evenings, we have a little group called Episcopal 101. We meet on Zoom and it's only 45 minutes. It's a lot of fun. And this year we have a, a special guest, uh, Bishop Plusmeyer is gonna be with us. So I, I hope you can enjoy it and, and pick uh, Bishop Plusmeyer's brain. Uh, he's a wonderful guy. He's an example of faith and I, I'm sure you will, you will enjoy it. Um, I thank you for all that you continue to do. We're gonna get through this together. You've been remarkable. You've been fantastic. Uh, it's been truly miraculous. So continue to stay safe. God love you. God bless you. God keep you safe. And we will be here next Sunday um, on Facebook Live. And we are gonna to try to figure out even when we're back in church how to broadcast at the same time. So see you here next Wednesday, Facebook Live, 11 o'clock. Happy Easter. Uh, can't tell you how much we love and miss you.